Hello y'all, welcome into Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah, and it's time for a book look. And today's book look, if you saw the thumbnail, if you saw the title, is this one right here, Stitch and Bitch Crochet, The Happy Hooker. Yes, this lady originally put out um, a knitting book called Stitch and Bitch, um, you know, the knitter's handbook and its companion stitch and bitch nation so yes for right now though while well, we're taking a quick look through i'm going to take off the jacket i actually purchased this i believe it was either a books or it was goodwill one of the two because this came out in 2006 i didn't buy it then because you know i didn't start crocheting until this past year that just ended and the original price on this sucker about 26 bucks us and about 36 bucks Canada. Um, and y'all know I'm cheap, right? You know I didn't pay that money. Not that it's not worth it, but I'm I'm frugal. I'm frugal, yes. Great word for it, right? I'm cheap. Nice book, nice hardback. You don't have to leave the jacket on it. It's actually a pretty cool looking book. And this copy appears to be perfectly clean. I haven't found any marks in it couple of little discolorations on a couple of the pages but for crying out loud I've been around a lot longer than that I've got a lot of discolorations on my pages okay um, a lot of great pictures in here this is right inside the front cover and, and yes I actually brought my little sponge with a little wetness on it so I don't have to lick my fingers because I hate doing that Ugh. all right I'm not going to read through acknowledgments and stuff. Lots and lots of stuff in the table of contents, okay? The table of contents is colorful. It's it's almost, I mean, it's not animated because obviously it's on a static page, but it's colorful. It's bright. It's easy to read, easy to find stuff. Broken down into sections like uh, part one, hooking up, learning to crochet. And the first chapter is Voulez-vous crochet avec moi? Which I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek anyway. Um, there's a history of hooking, uh, the joys of hooking, crocheting versus knitting. Ooh, the big battle, right? And uh, a guide to some crochet lingo. Which, you know what? I still consider myself quite the beginner, so this is kind of fun for me. And then there is more the crochet patterns yes all those patterns are in here too this is a good thick chunky book as far as crochet stuff goes um, it's not just a flyer this is an actual honest to goodness book and the style that it's written in it's fun Debbie Stoller has it's like listening to, to someone with, that has just a bit of snark maybe as much as me maybe um, She's fun. She writes in a way that could be considered irreverent, but then she gets her point across and it's really, really entertaining. There are pages of this introducing basically herself and how she came to crochet, that she actually crocheted before she knitted. And then she went back to doing some crochet because, you know, she wrote that knitting book and people were like, well, she said she was writing a crochet book. Do you even crochet? I mean, I was picturing the hair toss and everything. Um, she's like, uh, yeah. So, yeah. And there's interesting little bits of history about um, the his, you know, the crocheting history and stuff. Um, the crocheting versus knitting stuff is right there. And this is not, it's not all just the talk, okay? There are plenty of, of patterns in here, too. But she starts off with this the tools of crochet talking about what you need and what you don't need and the you know the anatomy of a crochet hook is something that's in here and some of the titles on on the, the particular things are really funny just talking about shaft which you know if you live through the 70s you know what that refers to um, a section called Size Matters, and it's about hook sizes and, and the equivalent uh, sizes and other things. Goes into a whole section about the fibers. Plant-based, animal-based, synthetics, and then a whole section about yarn weights. And here's some of the pictures um, 
with some of the samples that are in there and really nice descriptions of each one and gives you ideas of what to do with each type as well just in case you don't know um you know stuff talking about yarn texture and i love this I, that's why i just i love her writing it's so much fun in this section crocheting takes balls and skeins and hanks because it's not that kind of channel to quote someone whose shirt i'm wearing um wow how to make a center pull ball what what is this sorcery i may have to look at that i love me some center pull um how to read a yarn label because that is pretty important and sometimes they can be kind of cryptic tells you about different types of stitch markers um what you can use as stitch markers if you don't have stitch markers because we know you can use just about anything as a stitch marker also the standard yarn weight system she's got a chart for that in there as well uh, and then she goes into some really basic stuff. She starts from the beginning. How to make the chain, the chain stitch, the slip knot is in there, okay? How to hold your blasted hook and the yarn and like four different ways to hold your yarn, which I don't know, think any of them are the way that I hold mine, but that's okay. <laughs> we all do things a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, making the chain stitch and there's even a correction in here, which I think is funny Talking about the picture on one of the pages was wrong. So the illustration was wrong. So here is a picture to fix it I'm not that worried about that, but okay The turning chain and get, she gives you the abbreviations for each of these things too. Now I know some of y'all that have been crocheting since you know since a stick was first used uh, you know all this stuff already. A lot of us don't. Or might need to be refreshed, right? So, yeah. Some back to basics. With the fun snark mixed right in. Her writing style is, is really, really fun. Um, understanding gauge. Yes. Gauge is a four-letter word. I mean, not really. Not literally, but it should be. Ugh, I hate I know the importance of gauge, but I don't want to. Slip stitch, finishing off your work. And then the next section is walking tall. Half double, double, triple, and all of that in there. Cute illustrations right along with it. A lot of stitches are represented, including some more uh, fancier stitches. Increasing, decreasing, working in a circle. You could probably take this book, if you're good at learning from a book and illustrations, and start from just ground zero with just, you know, yarn and a stick, as they say. Um, all about how to make the circles, V-stitches, and just more and more of that. And then she gets into stuff like this, making images on your crochet. Color work using tapestry crochet. I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, how to do fillet just there's all kinds of interesting things in here in these sections um adding fringe tassels making your own crochet buttons yeah decorative cords you know just about everything you might want to need um and part two is crochet away the patterns after learning all those stitches and going through that part you could probably do every single thing that is in this pattern section. And she starts off with how to read the pattern in the first place. Tells you what you need to do step by step. How to read it. What these things mean. What the parentheses are for. And all of that stuff. And in the usual good snark. She also breaks down what the measurements might mean. For the different parts of a garment. Like I think, yeah, there she's showing like a, a sweater or a top of some kind. Gives you abbreviations, stitch keys for the graphs. That's helpful. <clears throat> and then some actual honest to goodness patterns. See so if she gives any kind of easy or anything on here. No, doesn't say, <clears throat> but it's a pattern for this scarf, garden scarf. 
that's really really pretty all those flowers and stuff all together just a very light item with also the graph if you'd rather work that way or if you want to work both ways with the words and the graph to be able to follow along that's very very cool um, another scarf called the one skein scarf I always have a hard time saying that so it says the finished size on this is three and a half inches wide 96 inches long I'm sorry it's all in American terms and I'm not going to go translate that this one is done with wool and a six and a half millimeter hook um, look at that that is really cool looking a nice sort of not real heavy scarf but it's you know I know this came out in 2006 yeah the stuff might not be today's fashion or whatever change up the colors do what you want with that here's another one called stripes and stripes forever and scarf belt or guitar strap it says <laughs> and they're using um brown sheep cotton fleece 80 percent cotton 20 percent merino wool um wow and a 3.75 millimeter hook. Now, look at that. The only thing that bugs me about this book, every single model in here is like stick thin. A model, you know, a typical model shaped model. You know, some of us are a little bit bigger. We'd like to be represented. I'm just saying. That's my stitch and bitch. Okay. But it also shows you, look at that, the end of that scarf. That's really nice. And it also gives you the, the different things to do with a guitar strap versus, you know, making a scarf out of it. <clears throat> Pardon me. Here's another one. It's, it's a shawl. It's called the Sweet Pea Shawl. It's kind of pretty. Very lacy and light and thin. And they're using uh, mercerized cotton. And a five and a half millimeter crochet hook so yeah oh yeah here's a better picture of it much better picture of that sorry for the glare but I just I like that really open lacy look on that and the graph is there too on the next page um, helping you out with that as well this one is called cold shoulders I guess if you wear it you won't have cold shoulders yeah, the directions are given for a size small, medium, changes for large slash extra large in parentheses. Yeah, my shoulders are bigger than that, okay? But if you know someone who is of that size, I'm sure that they would love to have that over their shoulders if they're wearing something with no shoulders on it. Oh, they're making it out of that mohair. Oh, that to me just looks like a nightmare. It's beautiful worked up. The stuff that they made, it's gorgeous. But to me, working with it, oh, oh no. Here's a hat. We're getting into hats now. And this one is actually called Yeehaw Lady. And I'm not kidding. There's the name. There's the hat. <clears throat> I don't know quite know about that one. Not for me. I'm not really a Yeehaw Lady. This one is called the PDQ, and it's got the little snap-up doohickeys on the side, which is kind of cool. Oh, and they show it here in a different color. And I know why they didn't show that, you know, to actually demonstrate the pattern, because you can't see it. It's black. Here's something called the Anarchy Irony Hat. Got any punk folks in your life? There you go. Oh, they're using a three and a quarter millimeter. Ugh. Little bitty yarns, a little bitty. It says they're using a four way, but they're using a three and a quarter millimeter hook. Well, that's going to be tough to work with for me personally. This one is called the Boy Beanie. Okay, it's camo and red stripes. That's kind of a contradiction. It's like. Are you trying to be camouflaged or are you trying to stand out? Pick one. Pick one. This one is called Strut. And I saw a better picture of it on the next page. Oh, maybe I didn't. I love the colors of it, though. I don't care for the shape. It looks kind of like a fez to me. 
Oh, it's made with Noro. Mm -mm -mm. Here's another picture of it, sort of in use again by the, the nice skinny chick that's wearing it. It looks like a fez, though. I, yeah. I kind of dig this. I don't think I could wear it, but I like it. This is called Spring in Winter. It is a hat and scarf set. And it's made out of a bulky five yarn, but it's like open and lacy. How cool is that? And yes, the snark goes throughout the patterns as well. Just to read a little bit of this, it says, In South Carolina, winter gets very cold for a couple of weeks. But for the rest of the season, it's often warm enough to wear short sleeves. That's why I decided to create an open work accessory set, something that would block chilly breezes without being too hot. And then it goes on to, you know, to tell you some more about it. We're not going to read the whole book here. You get more charts for the flowers and such because there is a nice flower on it. I just think it's really cute. Um, here we have some bags in bloom and fit to be tied cute little clutch bags. I really dig the dresses they're wearing. They're very retro, um, super cute fabrics. Nothing to do with the book, just I really like that. Um, the, there are several pages of that. This is cute too. This is another bag. It's called Granny's No Square. Little round motif-ish thing. There's a chart for that one as well. <clears throat> okay, these are cute. Looks like something I would carry, actually. Orange Glad and Fashion First Aid. I would carry that little orange bag because, of course, I would. That's just, I think that's really cute. First aid. Oh, here's another bag called the Exchange Bag. This is done in a two weight. I really like that. Yes, I know it's pink, but I, I could see it being done in a smart black. It'd look really, really good. Look at the way the handles are done up on that. That's really nice. This one is called Fat Bottom Bag. I mean, we know that Fat Bottom Girls make the world go round. What do Fat Bottom Bags do? To keep us from losing the stuff when the world's going around? I guess so. There's the picture there. <clears throat> I always think these kinds of bags with little handles like that are cute. I prefer something I can wear crossbody. That's just me personally. And here we go with the, the reason that it bugs me that all they have are little people in here. There's no way that that could be sized up enough to fit me. Oof. But I live in the South. I mean, a good tank top, that is life. That's called blissful. Spring and summer. Oh, well, maybe not. The back. The back's a little... Well, open for my taste, but I could see the younger set wearing that. This is cute. It's called Cupcake. This is a little top. See, I like that little ribbon in it. I would wear something like that, but I would, I would make it in like a really punky color and have like a skull pin on it because, of course I would. But you know what? With the images that she gives here and the, the repeats, oh yeah, you could make it, bulk it up there. This is cute. It's done in a four weight yarn. It's just a bolero. It's called Short and Sweet. Ooh. Almost dropped something there. And again, construction details. Designer wannabe tank top. I don't know why it's designer wannabe. That is just a nice, straightforward tank top um, with instructions on how to put it together. And it just gives you sizes up to 2XL. They're doing it out of uh, Shock Admirer. I always call it Studebaker because the word is too hard for me to pronounce. Uh, Nomada Catonia, 100% cotton. don't know what size it is. I think that's a 2, but I'm not sure. It is a 2 weight. Um, a sport weight yarn, which does make a nice fabric. Uh, ooh, not ugly shrug. K N O T. Not ugly, and they're that's what they're talking about there.
that's that's definitely not for me now this I saw it I'm like uh, uh, no not for me but you know what it's for somebody bikini in a bag there's the bikini no uh, but it actually does I think I don't know if it turns into a bag or what I'm not gonna read that far into it because no that's just crazy. That's crazy talk. No, the bag is separate. Okay. Just making sure. This one is called Prepster. Preppy Spring Jacket. It does look very preppy. I like the shape of that jacket, though. That's, that's kind of cute. Uh, they're using Cascade Yarns, Peruvian Highland Wool. Good grief. Fancy schmancy. A lot of shaping in this one though this is definitely not just a loose and flowy thing it's there's a lot of actual shaping this is cute it's called Jolly Roger yeah I like it gives you the graph for the you know for the Jolly Roger image on it unseemly sweater very fitted but the construction is super super simple look at that the front back and the sleeve and that's it the front and the back are made exactly the same that's pretty cool okay taking me too long to go through this book I just want to go through every page some really f open flowy stuff this is that picture from the front of the book called Violet Beauregard. I've never thought about actually making a skirt for myself to cro never crocheting a skirt. I think with all the yarn I would have to use for myself, that would end up being really, really heavy. <laughs> Some accessories, something called a cor the ruffled corset belt. I'm sure there are people with waistlines that that would be super cute on. Fluffy bunny slippers. <laughs> There's the picture for this side here. Look. Okay, that's super cute. And uh, I would wear those. A lot of instructions for that. There are some instructions. It looks like just on... Uh, Oh, for little pins. That's adorable. They're called pinups, birdie, and flower pins. There's them wearing some of them. But look at that. I can also see these being turned into some kind of ornaments. Um, but yeah, it tells you how to make the flowers. Gives you some information about the yarn. I saw these and I really, really like them. And then I found out they're made out of one weight yarn. Um, and the size that they give is a women's size medium. For a wrist that's five and a half inches in circumference. No. I have to buy eight inch bracelets. Big hands, big arms. But the gloves are so stinking cute. They've, they've got a thumb on them. It's not just the regular fingerless gloves with a hole for the thumb. Look at that. There's a better picture of the, the thumb, the glove itself. I like that. I love stuff like this. If I could figure out the multiples and stuff on it, I might make some for myself. They've got a few uh, amigurumi type things. Home, gifts, and baby. This one is called Bedfellows. Those are kind of cute for the, the, the younger, younger set people. Little tiny peoples. This is more my style. Uh, <laughs> these are called Skull Holders. potholders with skulls on them because of course they are and they've got them in different colors too I like that would I make and use those yes yes I would this is kind of cute it's called the Doris day mat and you make it out of rope I'm not even kidding like out of that nylon rope that you buy. That's interesting. I 
don't know how I would feel about actually trying to make that. I think that would be hard on the hands. And you can tell this is from 2006 because they have something called Cozy Pod Creatures for your iPod. Oh, didn't drop the bowl, but I dropped the sponge. And I got water on the floor. Yay. Yeah, I think maybe you could adapt this to go around some other device that you have, maybe a tablet or something. I don't know how useful that is now, but they've even got some cute faces to put on them. Look at that. Color bar blanket. I hope they have a better picture of it than that. They don't have the whole picture. Okay, this is, it's very colorful. The squares are kind of cool that are on there. And yeah, it's mostly just a granny, but not done as like, you know, quote, granny stitch style. With all these color blocks, it definitely, you know, sets it apart. Here's stuff for the babies, little monkey, baby hat, and matching afghan. I don't think I can get my cat to wear that. Matter of fact, he heard me mention it and he walked away. He had been in here the whole time. Baby hat and stroller blanket. The kid's grown up now. A whole section on resource guides, which is a lot of different yarn studios, um, notions, credits for a lot of the photos, and a pretty comprehensive index, which is nice. Um, not only the names of the items, but you can look up stitches and figure out where the stitches are used and stuff. So, yeah, I'd say that was a good buy. The writing in it, like I said, is very, very fun, very snarky. If you're afraid of the word in the title, stitch and bitch, I don't know what to tell you. It's just a word. They're not calling you anything. It's just a word. It's all good. I enjoy the book. I won't be getting rid of this one, I can tell you that. And uh, I'll put the jacket back on it now that I've done the flip through. Um, do you own this book or do you own anything by Debbie Stoller? Do you knit and have her knit books? I don't knit. Knitting is magic. Magic. But uh, this crochet thing, yeah, it's kind of fun. Thanks for coming by for the book look today. Got some other series going on as well. Links down below with my playlist. And uh, if you're not subscribed already, I'd love it if you would consider that. If you are subscribed, make sure you've got the, the bell turned on for uh, notifications because YouTube is really bad about not letting you know when a video's out. Just saying. See y'all very soon.